Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about a topic that I get asked about all the time, especially from you guys on YouTube, and that is, what size stone will pass? So to begin, let's talk about a little bit of background information. So first and foremost, there is an incredibly large margin for error when it comes to the size stone measurement that you're going to get from your urologist or your doctor. Now, a lot of that really kind of hinges upon our reliance on 2D imaging uh, for determining the size of the stone. And what do I mean by that? So when we take a look at an imaging procedure, whether it be an x-ray, a CT scan, an ultrasound, or on, any other variant of imaging that helps us identify and then also measure the size of the stone, they're all flat images. Now there's some newer techniques out there that will allow us to see a 3D model of it, but by and large, most of us that are gonna go see a hospital or doctor, we're gonna be relying on 2D imaging. So when we take a look at what measurement is actually best and what our goal is, really we're trying to ascertain what the mean diameter of that stone, that is the best unit of measurement. Now, unfortunately, and why there's such a wide variance as far as what measurements you're gonna get from your doctor or urologist is because the width is often represented. And what I mean by that is illustrated here in this incredibly crude drawing. So I've got kidney stones here, one and two, they're the exact same stone, but we're gonna talk about what would be measured on a 2D flat type of image plane. So the goal here is to capture the mean diameter. And what I mean by that is the width of the stone, because the width of the stone is what's gonna impact its passage through your urinary system. However, a lot of times due to the flat imaging, we're looking at the overall width. And what this causes is someone to come back from a doctor or a urologist visit with an over-exaggeration of what the actual stone size is. And I've personally had this happen a number of times where they've given me a measurement, say like a nine millimeter stone. And that's not necessarily indicative of the diameter of that stone or what my urinary system is gonna be dealing with, but the width. So there's a very, very big difference. Trying to pass a up to a one millimeter stone wide through a three to four millimeter tube such as your ureter is gonna be problematic. However, you can have stones that are nine millimeters or longer. However, their actual mean diameter is more manageable, you know, five, six, seven millimeters versus a much larger size of nine to 10 millimeters. So keep that in mind when you get this data from your doctor. So let's talk about what we define as small stones. So a small stone is really gonna be anything that is less than three millimeters. Um, according to the data that's out there, um, 80% of these stones are gonna pass unassisted, meaning without any intervention from you, like no other types of medications, just naturally it is going to pass on its own. Now, unassisted, the average time frame that's gonna elapse while you're trying to pass this stone is roughly about 30 days. Now, when it comes to medium-sized stones, now, these are getting larger, obviously. We're talking about between three to six millimeters in size. Now, in contrast to these small stones with your ureter, and the average human being is between three or four millimeters in width, small stones, no problem. These are gonna pass. Often, people don't even realize they have a stone outside of the initial discomfort in stage one when that stone detaches from the kidney. But with medium stones, now we're talking about some increased friction because we're bumping up against the actual natural width of your ureter. Now there is some innate and built-in flexibility with your ureter, so you can it can flex as the stone moves, and that's also when people have a stone that's passing, they'll feel pressure, and that pressure is what that stone is exerting on the wall of your ureter. So a three to six millimeter stone is starting to get a little bit bigger, and as you can see, the percentage rate of passing the stone unassisted, again, drops by about 20% to 60% of stones, or 60% of people will pass them unassisted. Now, as with you know, the small stone to the medium-sized stone, the time elapsed where you're gonna pass these stones is gonna go up just because they're bigger and they have a little bit more friction to deal with. So the average for these are 45 days to pass from start to finish. Now, large stones, this is where things get a little bit trickier. So a large stone, we're talking about anywhere between six and nine millimeters. Now, 
When I say large, that's not to say that there are not larger stones. There are stones that are one and two centimeters and larger that are out there. And I would look at those as extra large or more oftenly referred to as a unique stone where it, you know, circumstances uh, permit a stone that large to grow. It is not the commonplace occurrence. It is more of an exception, not the rule. So, but for what most people, the general public, are gonna counter as a large stone are between six and nine millimeters. Now, a huge drop has been identified here as far as in your ability to pass. Now, the big drop largely is due to the fact that after about six millimeters, urologists and doctors almost without exception recommend surgical intervention. So a lot of people that were covered in these studies that were observing if that stone would pass, they dropped off because they just went the surgical route. But personally being able to attest to the fact that you can pass a large diameter stone, I've passed stones eight, nine, 10 millimeters. It can be done, it's slow and it can be uncomfortable, but it can be done, but the chances of passing it, especially unassisted, do decrease pretty dramatically. Now, just a few conclusions I wanna run past everybody in this short video. So, I wanna make very clear, stones less than nine millimeters in diameter absolutely have the ability to pass unassisted. And by unassisted, I, I mean no medication, no other type of interventions uh, medically. But it is going to take time. That is the key factor. So some of the things that you can do to help yourself, obviously increasing water consumption to two to three liters a day minimally. And then additionally, stones will pass faster with the addition of an anti-inflammatory because when you're talking about your ureter walls and you're passing a stone through it, there is inevitably inflammation that occurs and swelling. And when that occurs, that actually has a propensity to grip the stone tighter and slow the passage of it. So having an effective anti-inflammatory, whether it's a natural or you know a more prescription-based pharmaceutical, that's your choice. But reducing the inflammation to get the swelling down is a key factor to help stones pass faster. Additionally, a diuretic is gonna be very, very beneficial because with opening up the pathways and reducing the swelling from that anti-inflammatory, adding a diuretic is going to increase your urinary output, which is gonna put pressure on the kidney stone to make it move. So increased water consumption fuels that diuretic, which is gonna put pressure on that stone, which is gonna allow that stone to move because you've reduced the swelling with the anti-inflammatory. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please drop me some questions if you have any in the comment section below. We're here to help, and uh, we'll see you again in the next video. Thanks again.